Hey guys, this is Baumik and welcome to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this is the third episode of the Burp Suite tool. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to use Burp Proxy effectively. And as we have learned in the past, Burp is the, I guess, most important tool from my perspective if you want to learn about application security and if you want to perform any sort of like, you know, penetration testing. Uh, so uh, last week, or not the last week, but uh, weeks before we saw about the Burp Spider and how to set up the Burp. So this week we're gonna go in detail how to configure the Burp proxy and, and you know, make the most out, out of it. A uh, couple things. So uh, Burp proxy mainly uh, used for intercepting requests and response. So when you are doing penetration testing, you have to inject the payloads and you have to observe the application response. So that's what you can do with the Burp proxy. Uh, then you, with the proxy, you can also, uh, you know, now they have also added the web socket traffic. So it's not just the HTTP traffic, but you can also capture uh, and see, you know, socket traffic as well. Uh, there is also, you know, HTTP history uh, you can track and if you ever want to go back to see all your traffic and then, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of options available. So uh, let's let's see a demo uh, that way you can easily understand like, you know, how to configure, what to configure and what to make sure when you are using the proxy for the first time. Okay, so uh, just a quick recap, uh, you need to go to the browser this is the firefox but you can use like you know chrome or anything uh, you have to set up the manual proxy configuration here uh, set the http proxy port here and once you do that you go to the proxy and here we are going to see you know how to do that so uh, when you open up the burp uh, you will find all these tabs and this is the proxy tab where the first one is the intercept where you have the actual uh, request and response this is all the history uh, you're gonna see this is the WebSocket history that I talked about and this is the option. So let's start with the options because these are the most important things in the uh, proxy. If you do not configure this right way, you may end up you know, spending more time than you require. So first thing, uh, you can definitely run multiple listeners. Uh, but I uh, right now have configured one listener which is running on port 8080. And as you have observed, uh, we have it here like, you know, 8080 configured in the uh, browser as well. Uh, if you edit this, so there are multiple options. So this is the port number which you uh, want to listen on. Uh, this is the IP address. Uh, right now it's a look back only. So that means, you know, it would capture all the uh, local host traffic. You can also do 127001. Uh, you can also define the local IP address and use it. So uh, it works either way. Uh, now, if you are testing, let's say, uh, an application which is not, uh, you know, uh, running on a web port 8080 or, or like, you know, or the application is communicating with the, with the multiple ports, then you can do this like all interfaces. So if the application is finding a request to port 3535, 4545, like, you know, it would capture all the requests. But in this thing, when you do this, you will be bombarded with the request. So all the traffic will be captured by the burp. So if it's not required, just keep it simple. Uh, you know, if you're testing just one app, keep it simple. Put 8080 here and use the, you know, uh, look back only or maybe uh, 27001. Uh, now this one, if you want to, uh, you know, burp to direct request received by the listener. So if you want when the burp receives the request if you want it to redirect to some other host you can do it uh, by configuring here uh, you can also use the force ssl and uh, invisible proxy this is mostly being used when you are testing the thick client application where it's a not a web-based application and this is certificate uh, i think we saw it in the past uh, if you want to test the ssl enable applications which is now the case like you know 90 plus 95 plus applications are now SSL enabled so you would have to generate the uh, self-signed certificate and then you have to install in your browser uh, you can also do it like you know with the specific host name or you can also like you know sometime application does the uh, certificate based authentication so here you can provide your custom certificate and provide the password as well but if you haven't seen how to install the CS certificate, I would highly recommend to go back and see the first video uh, in this uh, playlist.
all right so that's the uh, proxy listener uh, you can also like you know add multiple listeners you can remove the existing you can import export the CS certificate you can regenerate the CS certificate which is uh, very easy uh, this is this setting you would only have to do once uh, when you set up the bot proxy otherwise you know uh, it should be uh, preloaded when you open up the next time uh, next thing uh, this is the request and uh, response so by default it comes with like you know this check mark on which makes like you know you will be able to intercept any request so for example uh, let's say we are turning this intercept on and uh, we are on this file now you see uh, it has fired the get request now you will not see the response because the response box is not being checked off by default if we only got a request and page is actually loaded here so we did not capture any response here and the reason was this wasn't checked on so now we do that uh, let's go ahead and refresh the page again we see the request again and now we also see saw the response because this is also required like you know you want to verify whether your payload actually being you know reflected as is or uh, whether the application is doing any HTML encode or like any sort of encoding with the cross site scripting payload or S uh, SQL injection so all these things you want to capture the response as well another thing uh, I typically uh, like you know check all three boxes and do here as well now uh, one thing is uh, and URL is in target scope now what happens is if for example let's say you are testing on a Chrome browser and in Chrome you also have a Gmail open and running you have Facebook or three four other tabs running and so what it will do is like you know when you are when then like when you have Gmail open it in the background sends a request and response uh, you know multiple times and you will when you're testing you will keep on seeing you know a few requests here and there but if you do this like you only want to capture the requests if it's in the target scope and same thing you only want to capture the response if it's in the target scope so for that what you have to do is you go to target you go to the scope go here take this edit here Okay, Tigers, do you want to stop spending out of requests in the history bug tools? We will see this uh, later on, so I'm keeping this no for now. But yeah, so uh, this one, and now we have, uh, you know, added into the scope. So it will only capture the request for the in scope request. So if we have, like, you know, let's say uh, I am uh, intercept on and I'm doing yahoo.com right you would see there is nothing in here because yahoo.com is not part of the uh, target scope now but if I click on any of this link you will see the request uh, here because this was added into the target scope and you also saw some blinking here because when you add something at a target scope it by default like you know uh, but performs the passive scanning and and find out all the vulnerabilities so if you go here uh, so these are all the hosts like you know in the background that my uh, Firefox is talking to so that's why you saw a lot of this okay but uh, demo all right there you go so that's why you know it found all this vulnerabilities uh, did now nah, during the passive scanning all right so uh, let's go back here so okay so we covered the request and response now these are the web socket messages so if your application you know uh, performs any interaction uh, through web sockets then you want to intercept uh, client to server messages and server to client I usually check this off if I'm testing the app which is not using web socket because otherwise it's gonna keep uh, interrupting me by showing that web socket messages and you could see like you know uh, here you have all the web socket uh, history that was Mozilla was using uh, for certain purposes uh, if you ever want to uh, modify the response so like you know you want to unhide the f uh, hidden form fields and you want to remove all the JavaScript so this you can do like you know uh, doing the automatic modification uh, I generally do not touch any of this 
because I want to uh, keep it as is and observe by myself uh, same thing match and replace so uh, for example like you know if there is a user agent and if you want to replace let's say uh, if you're testing in Chrome but you want to set uh, Mozilla then you can uh, activate this rule and then every time uh, but captures it uh, the response or request like you know it's gonna change user region to Mozilla then uh, from Chrome uh, again I do not touch this because uh, I mostly use like you know uh, Firefox for the testing and uh, none of these are actually required but sometimes you may so for example like you know here it says like if you want to disable this access protection to actually see if you can exploit cross-site scripting because sometimes if this header is there it would not allow you to exploit cross-site scripting so that's why if you want to remove such headers like HSTS and things like that then you can do but I necessarily don't do this uh, SSL pass through uh, these settings are uh, used destination web server for which perfect directly pass through SSL connections uh, so this is again uh, not uh, like you know really used unless you are testing like in an enterprise app where you have uh, application and it's passing the traffic from one app to another and, and that's where you have to make sure like you know whether the SSL negotiation and everything happens perfectly even with when you're capturing the proxy uh, burp so that's why but again don't touch this if you do not require like at least for the beginners this is not uh, a requirement now miscellaneous uh, so some of these checks are by default one other uh, that I highly recommend is this one don't send items to proxy history or burp tools if out of scope because if you see here we have uh, like so many host uh, like you know history here along with the demo dot test fire because uh, that's that's the app that we are testing but as you can see we have all this and like you know this adds up when you are when you actually want to store like you know save this uh, file and export and and pass it on to someone because like you know it will be like I don't know more than uh, 100 200 MBs of file and you don't want that so uh, generally if you check this one now it will not store anything in the proxy history other than demo the test fire now if you want to see we are on 701 now let's refresh this page and you saw request 702 for demo.testfire.net which is in scope so that's good now if we refresh Yahoo you won't see anything here because it's not in scope and that's good because we only want and this is actually easier for us like you know if you want to go back to history and see what all requests you made and if you are looking to find any particular request then you can easily find one like an instead of 700 we would only be dealing with the 50 odd request so that's why I generally do that when I'm doing like focused testing on one of the application all right so we talked about all the options we talked about the WebSocket history uh, HTTP history uh, this is straightforward so like you know we briefly talked about it here you can uh, click on anything and then you can see the request response and then uh, from here you can also do multiple things like you, if you right click you can send to spider active scan intruder repeater uh, we'll go through each of these don't worry about this if it doesn't make sense right now but I'll go into detail why do we need this and when do you use each of this uh, and finally the intercept uh, which we already saw so for example again I'm gonna click on one of this link and then as you can see here uh, we have the request you can also see the parameters here so like you know it's using the URL and cookie you can also see uh, the headers here specifically if you want to make change you can do it you can do zero one you can make changes to j session id i usually do it like you know here which is so if you do something here it's also gonna change it here so but i mostly focus on the raw data and these hacks now if you also want to like you know perform any actions you can do from by clicking the action or clicking the right click uh, whichever is easier you can also drop the request so if you drop it here you will see the error like you know it was stopped by the user uh, same way if you want to see the response like you know you're gonna see all the headers here hacks 
uh, good thing is you can also if you just dealing with the if you just want to see the HTML you can see it here and then if you render it it would look like you know how it would look in the uh, browser so this is a really cool feature of this proxy um, one thing is so for example let's say uh, you edit a uh, alert or something like you know in the inject uh, like in the input pa in the request and as an as an payload and now you want to see if it's appears in the response or not then you can simply type it here and like you know as you type it will it will start looking for it so for example script right and as you can see it's a zero matches here but if it matches something so for example yeah so like you know uh, this less than tag like it was 229 matches so you can easily find it so I generally what I do is like you know if I do something like alert one two three I usually search it here and see and usually able to find where my payload is whether it was encoded or whether application like you know just uh, spit it out as is so that's easier for me to find out what happened with my payload so that's how I do it uh, use the search functionality for other than that uh, there are like you know if you like explore there are tons of things you can do with this one but these are the main settings which I would use and and you would also need like for 90% of the testing uh, so that's it uh, these are uh, the main settings which I used and I would recommend for you to use if you are just beginning uh, using the bar proxy and like you know play around with the uh, penetration testing but please let me know if you have used this in the past and like you know what other settings that would you recommend uh, doing it I would happy to know as well uh, if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button uh, and also subscribe to my channel I'll be back uh, with the next episode on uh, on the web application security uh, so thank you for your time and uh, have a great weekend